Hello, today we are here at the Washington House and we're going to be talking about a corner cupboard. What's your role with the reconstructing of the house? So basically, the house is being reconstructed to resemble the original Washington House and then my job will be to come in and furnish it to resemble the way the original Washington House looked. Now, because this house is a reconstruction and we are going to be able to use real fireplaces and real candles and have the windows open, just as the original house would have been, a decision was made to refurnish the house using uh, reproduction pieces as opposed to period pieces. Now, Megan, how do we know exactly what was inside the house? So that's the part that's sort of similar to what we did over at Kenmore. First of all, we have all of the archaeological evidence that we've found over the last decade or so, and that gives us a lot of good information about the ceramics and the glassware and even the hardware that was on the furniture. And then we have all the historical documents, um, similar to what we had at Kenmore with the probate inventory. Here we have Augustine Washington's probate inventory that was done after his death, and that gives us a nice room-by-room -room list of what furniture was in the house. Now, it does not give us descriptions of the furniture, but we can meld it together with the archaeological evidence and fill in the gaps. All right, now we're going to have these furnishings reconstructed mm -hmm. for the house. What's the first piece that's going to go in there? Well, the first piece is already underway. Um, it's currently being made by the joiner shop at Colonial Williamsburg. We're using uh, craftspeople who are trained in historic furniture making to produce all of the pieces. Um, and that piece is a corner cupboard. Now the corner cupboard is kind of an interesting story because we didn't actually originally know that it was in the house. It wasn't until we did some very fine investigations of the probate inventory that we discovered it was probably there. The probate inventory gave us a line item value for a bunch of junk that was being stored in a cupboard in the house. But it didn't give a value for the cupboard which indicates to us that it probably was a corner cupboard because a corner cupboard at the time was considered part of the structure of the house and was not valued as a separate piece of furniture. Very good detective work, Megan. Exactly. <laughs> you got a chance to go to Colonial Williamsburg and see the cupboard being made, so why don't we check out some footage of that? Uh, my name is Ted Boscana. I'm the master joiner here at Colonial Williamsburg, and we are in the process of reconstructing a corner cupboard based on an original piece in our collection. This piece is going to be going up to Ferry Farm, which was Washington's childhood home. And uh, it's a great project for us because presently I have three brand new apprentices and they are uh, assisting with the construction of this. They're actually doing most of the work and I'm just kind of guiding them through the, the process. Um, it's been a lot of material preparation for this piece and that's really one of the most important things at the beginning of the apprenticeship is just learning how to make boards flat and square into the proper dimension. So a lot of good work with that. We added the wrinkle with this particular piece of a round back which meant not only did they have to be able to make boards flat but then they also had to come back and intentionally make them not flat. So they had to create a curvature in those boards um, and this was all done again with the same plane techniques, uh, just using a curved blade in our planes to create that concave surface that wraps around the round back. Uh, the cutouts on these shelves are, are nice, uh, not only because they're very cleanly laid out with a compass, uh, but it's nice owning the original piece because we were able to actually take a tracing right off of the original piece and so much of this has been confirmed by just merely walking back over to the Peyton Randolph house where this piece is. Uh, it's above stairs in the lumber room and we've probably made half a dozen trips over there to confirm things through the process of building this. Uh, our blacksmiths have been instrumental in making the nails and the hardware that will be going into the construction of this. And um, it's mostly made out of yellow pine. We've got a couple of kinds of pine in the piece. The lighter colored material in the back uh, and on some of the shelves is a faster growing, what we would call a short leaf or loblolly yellow pine. The face frame uh, and a couple of the shelves and the returns here are long leaf yellow pine, which is the wood that they were really seeking out for um, high quality architectural work. I mean, the ultimate goal with a piece like this is that you're going to paint it. So uh, mixing woods is really not that much of, a, of an issue. Uh, we use the softer pine uh, on the back where it's not going to take nearly as much wear and tear, the harder material up front, uh, and it would uh, support the, door, the doors a little bit better. Uh, the paint that we'll be making will be uh, 
carried in a linseed oil, which was the common carrier for paints, and the color is to be determined, but will be made from 18th century pigments. Often with corner covers, the exterior was painted um, to match the trim color within a room, the molding colors, and the interior was painted in a complementary pattern to the china. Uh, Ferry Farm does not know what the interior colors were at this point, my understanding is, so uh, they're going to base the colors uh, for at least the exterior on surviving uh, architectural colors from houses nearby. You want us to rock the cupboard back and forth? Yeah, rock it back.